Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave, and today I was going to make a tutorial about writing pure functions, but then I realized I hadn't covered making shallow copies of data structures or deep copies of data structures yet, and that is foundational knowledge for writing pure functions. So let's get started. I will work my way up to shallow copy versus deep copy, but there are several levels we need to cover first. And I'm going to start today with JavaScript data types. Just a quick review. We have primitive and structural data types. Let's look at primitive first. And primitive has undefined Boolean, number, string, big, INT, which stands for integer, and symbol. And then we also have structural data types. And those are objects, like anything you would use the new keyword with, an object, an array, also map, set, weak map, date. And then there are functions. Now that we've quickly reviewed data types, let's look at passing values versus passing references. And primitive data types pass values. You see we have an x variable here, and I've set it equal to the number two. And then I'll define a y variable and set it equal to x. Now that will pass the value of two to y. And then once we add another integer, another one to y, and we log y to the console, let's go ahead and save this file, and we get three. And then if we're to go ahead and log x, x is still two. So by adding one to y, we did not change the value of x. You can see y is now three and x is two. So we have passed the value. Now in contrast to that, structural data types use references. So if we have an x array and the array has three elements, that the numbers one, two, and three, and then we set a y array equal to the x array, and after that, we push the number four into the y array, we can log the y array and see that it now has one, two, three, and four. But also, we'll log the x array, although we didn't push a number into the x array, and now the x array also has one, two, three, and four. So the array actually uses references in memory, like a pointer to where those values are, instead of passing the values themselves. And therefore, when we set the Y array equal to X array, it was actually the same thing. And so when we pushed the four into the Y array, we also essentially did that to the X array. Okay, now we have reviewed JavaScript data types, and we know that primitive data types pass values, while structural data types pass references to a spot in memory, and actually, we have to be careful about how we assign those because we could, uh, without meaning to, we could change the value of a different array or object, for example, by changing one we set equal to that because they reference the same spot in memory. And now we need to compare mutable versus immutable, which is different than value and reference. So we'll start with saying primitives are immutable. So I've got a variable here called my name set equal to Dave. And now let's look at this next line. We would expect to be able to change the first letter of this string to a W by referencing the zero position in the string. But this won't work because a string is immutable. And so now when we log this to the console, we still get Dave instead of the word wave because changing the W in the first position of the string will not work. Strings are immutable as they are a primitive data type. Now reassignment is not the same as being mutable or immutable. So we can set my name equal to David. We are reassigning the value of the variable. And so now if we log my name to the console after that, the reassignment does work. So do not confuse reassignment with being mutable or immutable. Now structures contain mutable data compared to the primitives that are immutable. 
So we can take the Y array we had earlier and set the very first element of the Y array equal to nine instead of one. And then we can log that to the console and we'll see now we get nine, two, three, four in the console instead of one, two, three, four because structures contain mutable data. After that, let's go ahead and log the X array to the console. Now remember, the Y array shared the same reference in memory as the X array. So by changing the first element or assigning here, we actually muted the data and changed it to a nine. Now the X array also has a nine in that first position. And that's because it still shares the same reference. So data types and references versus values and mutating versus immutable or mutable versus immutable, all of that is important to understand because pure functions require you to avoid mutating the original data. And so now let's look at an impure function. And by impure, it just means it's not a pure function. It doesn't mean it's a bad function. Sometimes impure functions are necessary, but this is an impure function because it actually mutates the data. Let's take a quick look at this. It's called add to score history, and it receives an array and then a score for its parameters or its arguments, if you will. Now the array, receives the score. So we just push the score into the array and then we return the array. Now this mutates the original array that is passed in. So this is an impure function. And so here let's go ahead and create our score array and then we'll call add to score history and we'll pass in the score array and we'll pass in a new score. And we can log this. And if we look at the console now, we get 44, 23, 12, and 14, but it has actually changed score array. And this mutates the original array, as I said, and this is considered to be a side effect. And you want to avoid side effects when you create pure functions. Now notice const doesn't make the array immutable. So that's something that can also be confusing as we sometimes think using const means we can't change anything. Actually, when you use const to define an array, it's a structural data type, you can still change the elements in the array. You cannot reassign the array, but you can change the elements within the array and that still makes it uh, mutable. It is not immutable just because we used const. And there's much more to learn about pure functions that I will discuss in a pure functions tutorial. And I'm not finished yet, but we're just building our way up. So I don't want to get derailed by going all the way into pure functions right now. But we do need to modify this function so it doesn't mutate the original data that we pass in, which is the array. Before we can change our function to a pure function from an impure function, we need to learn about shallow copy versus deep copy. That is making clones of structural data types, but they are different types of clones. So let's start with shallow copy. And first, we'll use the spread operator. Now we'll define a new array named Z array, and we'll set it equal to what we previously had, the Y array, plus we'll add one more element, and that's the number 10. After that, we can log Z array to the console, and I'll save the file. And now on the console, you see we have nine, two, three, four, as we previously had up here, but we also have the number 10. But the Z array does not share the same reference as the Y array. So now if we log the Y array, you can see we did not add the number 10 to the Y array. Likewise, if we compare the X array and the Y array that we had earlier when we used uh, the, just the equal sign and then the X array and the Y array had the same reference, if we look at the console to say those are exactly equal with the strict equals, three equal signs here, that is true. However, if we compare the Y array to the Z array in the same fashion, now we can see that is false. 
So we have made a shallow copy using the spread operator, and we wouldn't even have to add another element to the new array to do that. We could just use the spread operator and create a new array and they would not share the same reference. So that is a shallow copy. We can also use object.assign. So here I've defined T array and I've used object.assign and now I have an empty array here and we're cloning the Z array. So from there we can log the T array and we'll look at that in the console and we can see it also has nine, two, three, four, and 10. And then we'll say, is the T array strict equals to the Z array? And now if we save that, we also get false because they do not use the same references in memory. So we have made a clone that is independent. So it is not the same. If we push a number or anything else as an element into the T array, it will not change the Z array. So let's go ahead and push in the number 11 and then we'll log the Z array one more time. And we can see the Z array does not have the number 11. And that's because we pushed the number 11 into the T array. So now if we log the T array and we go ahead and save again, you can see the number 11 is only in the T array. But if there are nested arrays or objects, and I'll scroll up here so we can see this. So we're taking our Y array now and we're pushing in another array. So it will be a nested array. It is an element in the Y array, but it's also an array of its own. So now we're pushing in an array with the numbers eight, nine, and 10. And now we're setting a V array equal to the Y array using that spread operator here. So our V array should not be equal to the Y array. They should use different references and we can log the V array. And we can see here the V array has an array at the end of it. And I'll click here, this will hide VS code for a second, but I can click here in the console and expand this and we can see the fourth element, actually the fifth element, because we start at zero, but uh, it's element number four has the array of eight, nine, and 10. So now in VS code, once again, We'll push five, the number five, into the fifth position of the V array, and we'll log the V array again. And now look, we've added one more to that array that was in that position, and of course that's the number five. And now we can log the Y array, and we'll save and uh-oh, we have a problem. And here's the problem. Now the Y array also has an array with not three, but four elements. Now, how could this be? We used the spread operator, so it should not share the same references. But the problem is, is the shallow copy. Nested structural data types still share a reference when you use a shallow copy. So whether we use object.assign or the spread operator to make a new array or even a new object, I'm just using arrays for the examples here, they don't share a reference until that original has a nested structural data type. And then we have the same problem. A shallow copy does not go levels deep when it comes to structural data types. So any nested structural data types still share a reference, although the types that are not nested, they do not. So that's why it is shallow. So from there, we should also note that if you're used to creating new arrays with array.from or slice, which are also valid methods of doing that, those also create shallow copies. So far, all of my examples have used arrays for shallow copy. But when it comes to objects, what about using object freeze? Because everything we've done with an array so far could also be done with an object and objects also have a freeze possibility. So can we freeze that and prevent it from mutating? Let's find out. I'll start with a score object here and notice the third key 
has a value that is another object. So we have a nested object. Now we'll call object freeze on the score object. And now we'll attempt to set a, the value of a, so we've got score object dot third, which is the third key here, then dot a, which is the first key in the nested object, equals eight. And let's go ahead and log the score object after we've frozen the object and then attempted to set the value of a in the nested object to eight instead of one. Let's save this and take a look. Here we can expand this object. And yes, the third key now has a nested object where the value of a is eight. So even though we froze the object, we were still able to mutate the value here stored under the key a in the nested object. So once again, object.freeze is essentially a shallow freeze. And that is also a problem. So we're facing kind of the same problem there. And so the object.freeze will not stop our issue. So how do we avoid these mutations? Instead of shallow copy, deep copy is needed to avoid this with structural data types. And so several libraries like Lodash, Ramda, and others do have this feature built in if you use those libraries. Here is a one-line vanilla JavaScript solution, but note that it doesn't work with dates, functions, undefined, infinity, and several other data types and things that I list out right here, like file lists, image data, and so on. Complex data types, there we go. Uh, but we set this new score object equal to JSON parse, and inside we stringify the object using JSON as well. So we're essentially turning it into a JSON string and then parsing it back into an object. But the JSON stringify method loses the data types that we list above. So this, if you keep this in mind, it would be just like if you were storing the JSON in local storage or sending the JSON to an API, these same data types would have an issue there as well. So if we wanted to keep all of that intact, we would have an issue, but this is a quick solution to that if you're not dealing with these complex data types above. So here we could log the new score object, and now let's see what we have. We have the same object over here that was score object is now the new score object, and we can see if they are equal with the strict equals and it says false, they are not equal. Okay, so with that said, here is a vanilla JavaScript function that is essentially a deep clone function without having to use a library. And now if we break this function down, we're passing in an object. And the very first thing we do is check to see if the data passed in, the data type, is not an object type of data. And then we also have to check, we have to say, or is it null? Because remember, if we check the type of null, it says object, and that's a quirk in JavaScript. But if they are not, if it's equal to null, or if it's not an object here, because remember, even if you check type of on an array, it should say object. Um, so if you don't get that data type, we're just going to return the object right here. Other than that, it says, or whatever data was passed in, since it's not an object. That's what I should say. So here we're going to create an array or an object to hold the value. So this is a ternary statement. We're defining our new object, and we're using array.isArray to verify whether the data we've received is an array or not. If it is an array, we've got this new array started here. But if it's not, we start a new object, because it should be one or the other. And then we have a for loop, and we say for let the key in the object that we've received, and now we set this new value every time the loop goes through equal to the object, or the value actually, of the key of this object. And then we have a recursive call, and this is for any nested object or array 
we're going to set the new object and the key equal to, and here we're going to call deep clone. So this is the recursive call and we pass in the value. Now, if you're not familiar with recursion, I do have a tutorial on that and I will show the link above right now. I will also link to that in the description for this video so you can review recursion if you're not familiar with that. And eventually we return the new object and that is after it has cloned actually a deep clone, it's made this deep clone copy of the original object that was received. So now with that, we can go ahead and deep clone the score array as a new score array, and we can log it to the console, and then we can check to see if the new score array is equal to score array. So let's go ahead and I'll save all of that, and we'll look over here at the console, and we can see the new score array was logged to the console, and are they equal? Do they share the same references? No, they do not. We have made a deep clone of the score array in our new score array. Now, we've got my score object equal to a deep clone of the score object that we previously had in our original function. And now we can log my score object, and we can see if my score object is equal to the original score object. And here's what we've got. We've got first 44, second 12, third is the nested array here. And I said from our first function, that's not what this was if I remember right. I'd have to scroll back up to see, but either way, we're starting out with this object and it has first 44, second key, value of 12, third key is a value that is a nested object. But here we can see they are not equal, it is false, because we have made a deep clone or a deep copy of the original object. And now that we've created our deep clone function to make a deep copy, we can now make a pure function where we previously had an impure function. So let's look at the new pure add to score history function compared to the original add to score history. The original one received an array and the score, but now we're also passing in our clone function. And that would be our deep copy function. This is just a parameter, so a placeholder name, and I called it clone func, which is fine. We could have named it anything we wanted to. But now we define this new array equal to the result of the clone function being called on the array that's passed in. And this makes the deep copy right here. And then with this new array, we push in the score. And that way we are never mutating the original array. We're not mutating anything that this function depends on that's passed into it. And then we return the new array. And that makes this a pure function. If we always pass in the same array and the same score and the same clone function, we'll always get the same result. And I will create another tutorial specifically on pure functions, but this foundational knowledge is what you need to start out. And so now we can define pure score history, and we'll set it equal to the result of this pure add to score history function, and we'll pass in the score array that we previously had. We'll pass in a new score of 18, and we'll pass in our deep clone function. And now let's go ahead and log to the console the pure score history. And we can see the pure score history now has all the previous numbers of the score history plus the number 18, but it is a new array and it does not share references with the score array. And if we save that, we can see the score array still has the original four elements and it was never mutated. We've covered a lot today, so let's review quickly. And of course, you can go back through the video and I'll mark the chapters in the description below and you can review any chapter or topic of this video that you want to. We'll start with primitive versus structural data types. And what we learned today is that primitive data types pass values while structural data types pass references. Primitive data types are immutable and reassignment is not the same as being mutable or immutable. It just means we've reassigned the value of a variable. Structural data types contain mutable data. We were not able to 
uh, change the letter D in the string Dave to the letter W. So that was immutable. But a structural data type, like an array or an object, we are able to change the value of the element in the array or change the value of the key in the object. Okay, now shallow copy versus deep copy is where we started zeroing in on what would be important to a pure function. And what we're doing with a copy is making a clone of a data structure. A shallow copy still shares references of the nested data structures. And that allows for mutation of the original data, even if we didn't intend for that to happen. So when we use the spread operator or object.assign or array.from or even slice to make a new array, or maybe we're making a new object, we could have a nested object or array in there that would still share a reference, and that allows for mutation. So if we use object freeze on an object, we also need to remember that that creates a shallow freeze, but it does not freeze the entire data structure if there is a nested array or object as well. But deep copies share no references, and that's why learning how to make a deep copy, whether it is with a library like Lodash or creating your own vanilla JavaScript function like we did today. Knowing how to make a deep copy is important when you want to create pure functions. And pure functions require you to avoid mutating the original data. And that's why this is such foundational knowledge for getting into pure functions. And I have more on pure functions to come in my next tutorial. I'm very excited to cover that topic. But this information is just so foundational to understanding how peer functions work. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I appreciate it. I look forward to the comments every week and of course questions too. Put all of that down below and I will see you guys again next time.